There is no doubt that Cyberpunk 2077 has caused a lot of buzz in the video game industry over the past decade, particularly over the last couple of years. But a lot of people have very different reasons for being so excited for this game and there are many attempts to explain exactly why, while just as many people are confused about the hype as it seems like any other big game to them. Some have been asking for years now. Of course, the occasional fan or journalist will tell you you need to be hyped for the game. As your dutiful tomato, I'm going to take some time here to explain what it is that has people so excited for this game and give some insight on my own personal reasons, because I am also incredibly hyped. If you enjoy this content and want to see more quality videos covering Cyberpunk 2077 and sci-fi gaming in general, then make sure to subscribe to Space Tomato. And thank you for coming to this Tomato Talk. When it comes to the launch of a video game, or any product really, there are several reasons that anybody might be excited for said product. This is why you generally can't lump all fans of something into a single pile. Looking at Cyberpunk 2077, there are four main groups of fans looking forward to this game. Let's take a look at each of their arguments. There are, of course, the AAA high-budget RPG fans that look for any of the new big-budget RPGs to sink their teeth into, because they tend to be pretty fun and impressive to experience. These people might also be pumped for a new Elder Scrolls or a proper Fallout game, a proper Dragon Age game, or a proper Mass Effect game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Outer Worlds, etc, etc, etc. Some people are hooked to the RPG genre, and Cyberpunk 2077 isn't particularly a bigger deal than other RPGs, so this group might not be as enthralled in the hype as others, but it's something to be excited about regardless. Now your second group of fans is the fans of CD Projekt Red, the studio behind the game. Those who have played the Witcher games, or maybe just Witcher 3 and Gwent, who really enjoyed the way the world and the characters were created, and want to be more immersed in a similar fashion, and are looking for more of the company's work. Much like a person who might enjoy The Dark Knight, and enjoyed it enough that they figured they'd also like to check out Interstellar. Uh, your next group are the fans of the original tabletop RPG, or the second edition, Cyberpunk 2020, which are the basis of Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, this game is based on tabletop RPGs much like Dungeons and Dragons. These people have enjoyed the lore and fiction of the universe for decades and are now excited to experience the fully realized digital vision of Mike Pondsmith, the mastermind behind the project. These are most likely the most loyal fans, but also probably going to be the ones who scrutinize the game the most, as they want to see what they grew up with brought to the mainstream in the best possible representation of what they love. Finally, and this is the big one, there are those who are simply enamored with the cyberpunk genre and things related. This is the group that I identify with mostly. Those who watch the new Total Recall even though it's not as good as the original because it looks so good. People who continuously play through the Deus Ex series or Observer or sit and stare at concept art for hours. Now, let me help you understand why this group is so large. Quickly, how many big budget cyberpunk games can you name that have been released in the last decade? I'll give you a second. I'd say that was literally enough time. I can probably count them out on two hands. We got Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a sequel, Metal Gear Solid 5, a sequel, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, a remake, and of course the two best examples in the genre, Deus Ex Human Revolution and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Sequels. 
Now, I would say those last two are the only true RPG slash sim type games, and even then, you don't get to define your character. Now, let's broaden the scope a bit with a different criteria. Let's look at AAA RPGs and ARPGs in the last decade. Fallout New Vegas, Horizon Zero Dawn, Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto V, The Witcher 3, Mass Effect 3, Mass Effect Andromeda, Breath of the Wild, The Outer Worlds, Skyrim, God of War, Deus Ex, Deus Ex, Fallout, Red Dead Redemption 2, Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, Borderlands 2, Borderlands 3, Diablo 3, Nier Automata, Dragon Age 2, Dying Light, Elder Scrolls, Skyrim. Again, you get the point. While many of these games contain the same elements that make sci-fi RPGs great, I really only categorize 5 of these 24 examples as being strictly sci-fi. Fantasy and sci-fantasy games have been living in a golden age as of late, and I've been a bit jealous because sci-fi RPGs are still a bit few and far between. That's because sci-fi games generally tend to be shooters nowadays, and some people want to live in a sci-fi world without constantly being forced to kill people. Not only is Cyberpunk 2077 planned to allow that, but players will also be able to model their characters to their heart's content and play a specific role through this character in said world. You know, roleplay. So yes, internet person, it's possible that there is nothing particularly game-breaking that can be said about the game so far. But apart from the outer worlds, we've been hurting for a good, proper, big budget sci-fi RPG over the last decade, and this is like a love letter to us. There are a couple of candidates on the horizon for strictly sci-fi RPGs that could add to this genre, but we'll have to wait and see how they fare. Could 2077 possibly not live up to the hype? For some people, that's almost certain. Seriously, guys, temper your expectations. But as long as it's quality, it will be an absolute joy for fans like myself and I am almost certain there are a lot of fans out there like myself. So when you see people excited for Cyberpunk 2077, remember that not only are there some pretty varied reasons for this excitement, but also a big part of this anticipation is for the genre as a whole. Deus Ex proved that Cyberpunk RPGs had a place on the big stage but didn't quite bring it home. Now it's Cyberpunk's turn to pick up the mantle and set the stage for more projects in the genre to gain some attention. Some things like Game Deck, or Observer, or Lo-Fi. Who knows, maybe this will bring out a new Deus Ex eventually. Regardless, it's no secret in the community that this game is important for the genre, and the people who are clamoring for it aren't necessarily specific to Cyberpunk 2077, but the Cyberpunk genre as a whole. So I look forward to seeing how this plays out. If you enjoyed this talk and you're looking for more discussion on the game and sci-fi gaming in general, make sure to subscribe to Space Tomato for news, opinions, and gameplay across the genre. And make sure to find me on other social media like Twitter and Twitch, where I just became an affiliate and will be working towards becoming a partner as I stream plenty of sci-fi games including Cyberpunk 2077. I'll catch you in the next video.